For BS that later become WS and vice versa not in the same relationship. My husband and I got together in college and we've been together for 10 years, married for 7. We have a beautiful 18 month old daughter together. We always had a very loving marriage and I considered him to be my soulmate. I was a virgin when I met him, so needless to say, he's my first everything. He started an affair with his colleague right after our daughter was born. D-Day was right before Christmas of December 2019. He said that he was confused about his feelings and that he was in love with both of us. He soon changed his stance, saying that he didn't know what he was thinking and that he wanted our marriage and family more than anything in the world. I didn't buy any of it and moved out in January. We officially separated. I had to move back in because of the virus, but we've been sleeping in separate rooms. As a family, we've been doing really well and growing closer. He has become extremely loving towards me even though I stopped all intimacy with him after D-Day. However, yesterday we had a very emotional day after a long time. It was intense, we ended up getting intimate. My husband held me and cried after that, saying that he would love me and protect our family forever, claiming that it was the most beautiful night of his life. I on the other hand, felt absolutely nothing. I almost felt violated in a way even though it was fully consensual. I've realized that his touch repulses me now. S time has always been an emotional experience for me, and I've lost that connection with him. I don't think our marriage has a future. I need to heal from my marriage and move on to a healthy relationship which doesn't carry the trauma of betrayal and hurt. Our daughter deserves to see healthy relationships growing up, and I can't have that relationship with her father. How do I tell him now? I'm sure he thinks we will reconcile. I don't want him to think that I lied to him about my feelings or strung him along. I want to do this in the kindest and least hurtful way possible. I want the wayward perspective on this. Story 2, How to Verify Information with BS On February 20th of 2020 I made the worst decision of my life. I went to a party without my BS, and kissed another man. We also went somewhere private to have S time, but I was reminded of my BS as we were taking off our clothes, and I instead cried and left the party. I immediately confessed to my BS and he broke up with me. He didn't go no contact with me, and I have been working to earn him back ever since. He has been on the fence about reconciling since September. He does not believe that I did not have S time with the AP. The AP is a classmate of his, and apparently he lied and said that we did have S time. I thought BS would not know if I hadn't confessed, due to there being almost none of our mutual friends at the party that night, but one of his classmates took a pic of me and AP together and sent it to him. This classmate does believe that I didn't have S time with AP because there simply wasn't enough time between me going with him, and then leaving the party. He does not want to get any more involved though, and I understand that. So far, we thought about getting a polygraph this month. I was not able to afford one, but I was able to find seasonal work over the Christmas break to earn the money to pay for it. Earlier this week he cancelled the polygraph, saying that even with the polygraph proving that I am not lying, he will still always doubt. So what I am asking now is, is there any way I can prove to him that AP is lying, and that I am truly remorseful and not lying to him? Edit, I'm getting the adultery subreddit recommended to me. I really don't want to see anything related to that, so if carries a way to block a subreddit please let me know. Story 2, Update BS attempted to end his life today. Hello everyone I'm sorry if this is messy I am not doing so well right now. BS was supposed to come over today for the weekend but he said he was feeling sick so he couldn't. The way he was texting was really strange and I wanted to go make sure he was okay because it seemed really not like him. I get to his place and Therese no answer when I knock on his door so I go in he has all this legal paperwork clearly laid out on the table but that's none of my business right. So I guess he didn't hear me calling for him because when I go to his bedroom Hess sitting there crying with this gun under his chin he gets startled when he sees me and I thought I scared him into shooting but he didn't. He says he sat there for more than an hour in that position. 
He was dressed up really nice and showered and everything and he had towels laid out on his bed so he wouldn't make a mess and I am so glad I came when I did I knew something was really wrong. He said now that he is glad he didn't do it and he is happy I came and has acting kinda normal but also still in shock kinda. So am I but I realize what could have happened if I didn't show up and I am so scared to leave him alone but how do I respect his wishes if he asks me to leave him I feel like if I do it's basically killing him like. I don't know what to do I'm just happy he is alive but I'm so so scared. He said it was a lot of factors not just me but I still played a part in it I'm sure. He promises it was a one-time impulse act but he planned it out with the legal stuff and showering and getting dressed up so I. He said he saw how sad it makes me and he won't ever consider it again and it was selfish of him. He said because he knows he won't do it again he doesn't need therapy or anything but I disagree I just want to know what to do. I'm really really mad at him I want to shake him and scream how stupid that is but I also want to hold him so tight and never let go. Edit. Hello everyone thank you for the advice. After lots of convincing, I convinced him to at least get evaluated at the hospital for my peace of mind. He is such a strong person for doing this, and I am so proud of him. We are going to be leaving soon. I can't believe I almost lost this amazing man. I'm so scared that if he ends up in inpatient hospitalization he will think of it as another betrayal for me. But as long as he is alive that's what matters. Edit. He said that he thinks I'm probably going to be running around on him while Hess in the hospital. I would never. I want to be in there with him but after hearing about what led him to this point they thought it would be best to assess him without me there. I don't know how I can prove to him that I'm not cheating on him while he is in the hospital. Edit again. He is spending the night there at least. He is running an event this week and I am trying to send out emails to all the people saying that questions need to be directed elsewhere, but it's really overwhelming. I keep having thoughts of what would happen if I was even one second too late. Story 2, last update how do you deal with the feelings that come with NC? I've been NC with my BS for a while now, but it feels like my mind isn't. There hasn't been a day where I haven't thought of him. Sometimes I'll be okay doing something or at home and suddenly I smell his cologne faintly for just a moment, and I'm sad again. Or I'll see something that brings up a memory, or I'll see a meme I want to send him but can't. The worst though, that happens at night. I don't get as much sleep as I used to. I need to watch YouTube videos until I fall asleep, because he used to read me SCPs and other things before bed sometimes. Obviously, YouTube can't compare with lying on his chest and hearing his has heartbeat and his really smooth and silky semi-whispering voice. Valentine's Day was especially rough. I'm working with Mike to address and handle these feelings, and to fill the void that used to be filled with him in my life. I guess I'm just wondering if others have gone through the same experience, and I'm struggling with feeling pathetic at how I can be brought to tears over barely smelling something for a moment that reminds me of him. TikTok part. Taking responsibility heard on a TikTok this weekend. You are responsible for how you act, regardless of how you feel. You are responsible for how you treat others, regardless of how you feel. You are responsible for how you behave. I know that taking responsibility for the horrible choices we made is very difficult, but until you can do this, it will be very hard to try and reconcile. This probably should be said louder and over and over again to the ones in the back.